What's going on guys, it's Joe here and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be looking at Dungeoneering and the rewards you can obtain from it. In the video I'll be showing you what I believe to be the 10 most beneficial rewards and I'll be explaining why, but before all that, to the intro. So remember guys, this top 10 is made purely from the opinions of myself. I thought I'd just put that out there. This isn't at all factual. Instead, it's the opinions of me, Joe. So yeah, we're probably all screwed, but anyway, in at number 10, Chaotic Weaponry. You will need level 80 and the corresponding skills to wield these items, along with 200,000 Dungeoneering tokens to make the purchase. Honestly, for people new to PVM, I'm talking about those just delving into God Wars Dungeon 1 and places like that, People with mid-level Slayer, these weapons are perfect for you. They are in effect free, just invest a little time into Dungeoneering and you'll have tier 80 weapons that will do some respectable DPS. They're also a good stepping stone on your way to those more superior tier 90 weapons, but the biggest attraction for me about these weapons is the fact you're not going to be parting with any money to get them. In at number 9, the Chaotic Remnant, another piece of gear that can be helpful in PVM situations and what a lot of people forget about or just simply don't know exists. The Remnant costs 100,000 Dungeoneering tokens and can be attached to the Saradomin's Murmur, Hiss or Whisper to create something more powerful and you will need level 80 in the corresponding skills to wield them. These are the three amulets then, they offer plus 44 range, strength and magic bonus, making them somewhat comparable to some of the best amulets in the game. As you can see the Amulet of Souls which costs over 20 mil is fairly similar other than its prayer bonus. So again, this is a real money saver. The only downside to these in the necklace slot I can think of is that they are only suited to one combat style. But like I say, do some Dungeoneering and you've got them for pretty much free, other than the cost of the Murmur, Hiss and Whisper, which I don't think is even one mil anymore. In at number eight, the Edimu Resource Dungeon. This one isn't actually a reward you purchase, but instead something you unlock. The requirement is insane, 115 Dungeoneering along with 90 Slayer to kill them. Crazy I know, or they would have probably been a little further down my top 10. The XP from these though is nothing to laugh at and they really are one of the best money making Slayer tasks in the game. They're really easy to kill as well and they also drop the Blood Necklace Shard, which like the Remnant, can be attached to the Fury Amulet to make it even more powerful. They also drop the Edimu Pet, which I guess is always a bonus. In at number 7, one of my favourites, the Bone Crusher. You will need level 21 in Prayer and Dungeoneering to use it, and it costs just 34,000 Dungeoneering tokens to purchase. This one is definitely worth getting, guys. It automatically buries the bones of your choice. As you can see, it can be changed, so if you're collecting, for example, Frost Dragon Bones, and you don't want to bury them, you can configure the settings so it won't. However, if you are mass killing a certain creature for combat XP or something, it is definitely worth using. It doesn't take up an item slot either as it can be kept on the tool belt. So it really is just free prayer XP. Instead of leaving them bones on the floor, let the Bone Crusher convert them into XP. This leads rather nicely onto number 6, the Demon Horn Necklace. Along with the Bone Crusher, this is one of the most convenient pairings in the game. It does have a lot higher requirements to use though. 90 prayer and 90 dungeoneering as well as 35,000 dungeoneering tokens to make the purchase. But when worn, this amulet converts Buried Burns into Prayer Points, and it is so overpowered. Just normal burns restore 50 points, Dragon Burns etc even more. The amulet used with the Bone Crusher allows you to camp creatures with no need for food. The Bone Crusher buries them and the Demon Horn Necklace restores your prayer. You honestly can sit and camp a creature using Soul Split and Turmoil, or Torment or Anguish, whichever combat style you're training, and you will never run out of Prayer Points or health. Honestly, if there's two things I'd recommend spending your Dungeoneering tokens on, it's the Bone Crusher and the Demon Horn Necklace. In at number 5, another favourite of mine, the Ring of Figure. You will require level 62 in both Attack and Dungeoneering to use this item, and you'll need 50,000 Dungeoneering tokens to buy it. This ring really is your best friend when it comes to killing boss monsters. When worn, the Ring of Vigor uses only 90% Adrenaline when an ultimate ability is used, instead of the whole 100. This is more than useful at many bosses. One I found it helps at is Vindicta. You're going to be wanting to use Berserk almost every kill. 
and it allows you to get those threshold abilities off as soon as possible. This ring really does allow you to take your DPS to the next level. Number 4, another resource dungeon and probably my favourite dungeon, Frost Dragons. You will need 85 Dungeoneering to get here but honestly, if it's money you're wanting, this is the place to be and 85 Dungeoneering, trust me it is worth doing. The Frost Dragon burns are upwards of 13k and in this clip I collected just an inventory, that's 28 burns. It literally took me 2 minutes and I sold them for 376k. That means even with a summoning level too low to bring a beast of burden, you can still rake in the cash. If you do have a beast of burden, then you really are laughing. With winter storage scrolls or magic note paper, you can make bank. Number three, scrolls, scrolls, and more scrolls. Now I'm gonna talk you through all the unlockable scrolls in one, instead of giving each of them a place in this top 10 because, well, it wouldn't be a very interesting video. First off we have the scroll of life, you're required to have level 25 in both farming and dungeoneering to use this and it only costs 10,000 tokens to buy. Once unlocked when harvesting patches, including dead ones, players have a permanent chance of receiving their seeds back and there is also a 5% chance of getting a tree seed back from a dead tree or stump. Up next we have the scroll of cleansing and this one might just be my favourite. You will need level 49 in both herbal and dungeoneering to benefit from the scroll and you will need 20,000 Dungeoneering tokens to buy it. When purchased, players who concoct a potion will have the chance to complete it slightly quicker, and there's also a chance you will save the secondary item that's required to complete the potion, which can save you a lot of money, believe me, especially if you're going for 99 or 120. The next scroll is the Efficiency Scroll. You'll need 55 Smithing and 55 Dungeoneering to use it, with a further 20,000 Dungeoneering tokens to purchase it. Once purchased, the player will receive the Wasteless Smithing ability. This means when smithing an item that requires three or more bars, there is a chance that you will retain one bar. In this clip, I made steel plate bodies, a fairly common method for training smithing. And as you can see, along with the portable forge, the bars you save is actually quite amazing and very cost effective. Next up is the Proficiency Scroll, and this is exactly the same as the previous scroll, it is just the construction equivalent. The requirements for some reason are a little higher, you will need level 60 in both construction and dungeoneering, and like the Efficiency Scroll you will need 20,000 dungeoneering tokens to unlock it. The final scroll is the Scroll of Dexterity, again it is the exact same as the previous two, only it's the crafting version. You do require 60 crafting and 60 dungeoneering to use it along with 20,000 Dungeoneering tokens to buy it. And once again, as you can see in this clip, when unlocked and used with the Portable Crafter, you're gonna save some serious cash. The thing I love about these scrolls is once purchased, their effects are permanent. Invest your tokens in these and eventually they will save you a lot of cash. On to number two of the top 10, the Melia Potion Recipe. This costs an insane 500,000 Dungeoneering tokens and allows you to make combination overloads. Critical for bossing and slaying certain creatures. For example, the Searing Overload protects from Dragonfire, as well as boosting your stats like the regular overload. Now, I've never purchased one of the recipes this way, so let me know in the comments down below. It says unlock one of the recipes the Melia Clan is seeking. Now, is that 500,000 tokens for one? Because that is insane. I purchased them from Lady Melia for a few million GP, which is definitely the way to go about it. I would not bother blowing 500,000 Dungeoneering tokens on them, unless you're 120 and have enough to waste. But yeah, that is the number two spot, so what takes number one? You guessed it, the Charming Imp. You only need 21 summoning and Dungeoneering to benefit from this, but will need a further 100,000 Dungeoneering tokens to purchase it. The Charming Imp will automatically pick up the charms of your choice whilst converting the ones you're not interested in straight into XP. If you're going for 99 summoning or 120 for that matter, this thing has to be purchased. You can camp Water Fiends, the Abyss, Dagonoths, and this thing will not miss a charm. Don't waste your time running and picking them up, let the Imp do the dirty work for you. Using this will not only collect your charms, but if you're not wasting your time collecting them yourself, you're going to be gaining a hell of a lot more XP per hour. That is my top 10 Dungeoneering Rewards video guys, I hope you enjoyed it and found it somewhat helpful, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Peace. <gasps> Who the fuck is that?